Good morning everybody. This might be quite a long one, I'll try and keep it short, but I wanted to, on my blog the last time I posted, I posted some papers and some, well it was an inspiration post and this is what I'm doing with it. So here are design sheets that I made um, recently, there's one, and there's another one, okay. The the pages, they're A, A3 um, sheets of information and inspiration. So, and I'm coming back to these for this piece, okay. So that's another one, and that's that one. So there's three there, three A3. Um, they'll be on my blog somewhere. Um, I'll try and link to them if I remember. But what I want to do with this paper now, I've been stitching papers to alter the surfaces to create unique, really, because I don't think you'd be able to buy this anywhere. Um, unique surfaces for hand embroidery okay so they're all distorted stitch papers that I'm tearing up and re-piecing some of them this one for example has got little snippets of silk velvet in it um, which adds a nice touch because there's a nice sheen so what I'm hoping to do with this is do something like these A1 pieces but with this very delicate fragile paper um, so what I'm thinking is I think that's probably about 10 by 7. I haven't measured it, I'm just guessing there. Um, but it will be quite big. And I'm going to have to complete the centre before I begin to add on. Because otherwise, if I've got a big piece, I won't be able to get to the centre. Um, so I need to make sure my centre, I'm happy with my centre before I move on. So, so far on here, I've got torn uh, magazine images. Da -da 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 just for a bit of colour. On here, this is silk velvet. I've edged it with chain stitch and I'm in the process of doing a little web stitch on there. So these little islands of silk velvet are ripe for hand embroidery. So I've been thinking about what else to add to this, what else I can add to this, taking inspiration from that sh those sheets I've told you. So on one of those sheets, I've got these little lace rings, these, okay. So I'm going to do one of those for here. Um, I've threaded my needle already, if I can find it. Just with cotton abroader. And I've got a ring. Now these are just curtain rings from Ikea. Um, they're just smooth rings, plastic, white plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stitch around this bit of vintage edging that I've got. Just roughly stitch, stitch around. It's not cut out as a circle, I know that, but that doesn't matter. I haven't got a knot in this thread because I'm going to tie it off so it doesn't matter about a knot. Um, just loosely stitch around the outside of it. Big running stitches. And you can do this to make adornments for whatever you're making. So if you're making something in a particular fabric, you could get some rings and just make these as an extra adornment. I guess they would even make buttons to be fair. So, so that's all the way around. So I'll put my little thing in the middle. Okay, get both ends of this. I maybe should move it off there, then you can see there. <coughs> put my little ring in the middle and just pull up both ends and it'll cover that. Okay. Now it's purely decorative, it's not going to be used as a fastening or anything. Pull it tight and then tie it off. Um, so it doesn't matter if the back is raggy where you've cut it or anything. Uh, tie it off. Tie, tie, tie. I always tie it off a lot, I'm over cautious. So then the next thing I need to think about is tying this to there. So. Isn't that lovely? It's lovely. It's just a really nice adornment. I need these in the centre, these threads, to use it to tie it to that piece of work. So I just bring, I'm not doing this to sew in the fabric, I'm doing this to make, to allow these threads to be in the centre of the work so that I can tie it on in the cent use in the centre because it'll sit better if I tie it on like that. Come on, get a grip. I 
and I will pull in before I finish this video so you can see better but for now I don't want to pull out of the vision so if I pull in too much then I forget where I am and I move out of the camera line right so they're in the center now okay those two strands so if I get this back now where do I want to put it da -da -da -da. I could put it anywhere really. I hope you can see the bullion knots. Lots and lots of bullion knots. So there's a bit of found lace there. There's a little bit of edge in there, like a trim there. Um, so where do I want? I don't want to put it on this old velvet because I want to probably maybe put it in there. On there. But I don't want it to look plonked. I don't want it to look plonked, but I also don't want it to cover that found lace or this pink thing so if I put it there I need to kind of like try and overlay it so I need to thread my needle with these ties off the back which is easier said than done just bear with me so that's that one I'm not sure, I'm going to turn it to face me, you know what, yeah, let me have a look, I'm not sure, I don't want it to look plonked, um, I'm wondering if I can get it, no, um, right, I may put it there, but then I'm going to add to that, so that's going to be, oh, maybe down here, that's, all, that's nice actually down there, because on here, on this bit, there's a bit of paper at the bottom that's stitched and then another bit overlaid. So it might be nice there. I can always move it anyway later on. So I'll just thread that through to the back, that one strand. And then thread my needle with the other one. So I'm going to be adding to this as I work outwards, if that makes sense. Um, Just tie it off. Okay, now if I decide to move it, I can just cut it off and I can re stitch it because it might come undone the gathering that I did, but I can re stitch it, that wouldn't be a problem. So I'll tie that on there and cut those off. Now, the other thing I want to do to this is continue to add. So there it is on there continue to add nice bits of vintage fabric I've got this this is a little tail off a collar um, and I'm wondering where I could put that but maybe now is not the time for this maybe this needs to come when I add my next bit of paper and I'm reluctant to add that paper yet because I know there's more I can do with this um, so and as I say I want to completely finish this bit before I add any more because it's going to get harder and harder to get to the middle um, so yeah, so I want to put this in somewhere. I do think that the, this bit here, this paper, isn't as delicate as the other papers. Um, so it might go on there, but again, it's got to be integrated. I don't want it to be plonked. If it went over the two of them, down there, maybe encroached on that bit of pink paper, that might be nice. Yeah, I'll pin that on there. And then I can stitch that on later. Now I don't know whether I'll leave it free because I don't want it to get creased or anything. So I can maybe just attach it on the top and then just a little tiny tie on the bottom leaving it free there, not really clamped to that surface if that makes sense. So that's what the other post was all about the other day anyway. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to make more papers because you can never have enough of these, you can never have too many and I just love having them anyway, they make me very happy. Okay, happy Easter by the way, happy Easter. <laughs>